Samaritz in Switzerland, the oldest track in the business, 125 years. They've been sliding down the valley to the neighboring village of Cellarina. Welcome everybody to the 2023 BMW IBSF Bobsleigh and Skeleton World Championships. Saturday morning and we begin our bobsleigh action with women's monobob. I'm Martin Haven, delighted to have British slider Greg Kackett alongside me. Greg, this place is a feast for the eyes, for the ears, for the heart, but it is also a racetrack that has its own peculiarities. And quiet as possible. You can set a sled into a skid down this straightaway, which is absolutely what you don't want. So here at this point in the foreman, we're told, get in, get down and don't move. So as you're hitting into wall, which is our first corner here, this is going to be an interesting one because there's a three pressure on this corner, which in the mornings when it's cold and grippy, it's a lot easier to get round. Um, then we come into snake one and two. You're trying to stay as smooth and soft as possible here into sunny corner, just a big whippy right. Brings us down into Nash and Dixon, named after the two legendary British gold medalists from the 64 games. Into the iconic horseshoe corner. At this point, you feel like your bum's going through the bottom of the sled. Massive pressure into telephone and shamrock. Now, watch this corner here. It's pushing people right today, so we look for taps as we come into Devil's Dyke and Nameless. And then we come into our four big right turns. We've got tree, we've got bridge, and then coming under the bridge into leap. And then Gunter Sachs, where we're coming into our top speeds, entering Martineau, where we came, we go over 90 miles an hour here in the end, in the four man stuff. It's an incredibly fast. Uh, pace track this into Portago to finish. Now, Portago again as well was cut strangely this year, so we were seeing a few crashes in training. So we'll see if uh, people are navigating that successfully today. Yeah, I think everybody's had a very limited time on the ice, only six runs in training for Monobob, so two days with uh, potential three runs each. And as you say, because of the depth of the overnight low temperatures, air is kind of minus 10 at the moment. That's probably in the sunshine. In the shade, it feels a whole lot colder. Ice temperature minus seven. It is frosty to start with, and the track just speeds up all day long. So it's going to be a challenge. And, and particularly with the skittery nature of the sleds anyway, some of the, sled, some of the corners this year have particularly been causing lots of problems. So getting four clean runs, it, it, pretty much impossible. I mean, you know, you need three decent runs and one that's not a horror story, and then you're hopefully going to be somewhere competitive. Yeah, the, I mean, the girls, especially the big starting girls here, they're just going to be looking to get um, off the top of the block as, as fast as they can and just stay as consistent as possible. It's, it's consistency. If you put together four consistent runs in a place like this, you'll probably come down fast. Absolutely right. 20 sleds in our field. Our world and Olympic champion, Kaylee Humphreys, right in the centre of that. 11 of our sliders are World Championship rookies as well. So we've got a lot of new names. Some have raced here before, some have not. Some were in the World Cup race last year. Some like Georgetta Popescu and Victoria Chinanska were here in the Youth Olympic Games in 2020. But there is a wide variety of experience. Getting our Women's Monobob World Championships underway here in Samaritz. Martin Haven and Greg Kackett watching the action with you. Ying Ching of China making her World Championship debut. The 25-year-old finished in 16th place last year here in the Monobob race. But her best result came just last week in Altenburg, where she finished in fourth place, just out of the medals. Yeah, fourth place finish for you was, was really cool to see. Again, we're seeing the Chinese program coming up. So there's a six-second start record. So we're going to see how that will stack up on the day, because obviously it's a new start record every year. Yeah, um, brand new track built by hand every year in roughly the same place as the previous season. So she will get a start record and a track record, because she's the first one down. That's it. Must be nice to go first. So again, bit tap there so we're looking to keep this top section as quiet as possible she's got a lot of speed um to, to gain at the bottom so she's gonna want to tie that up a little bit this is nice nice Again, and same sunny. Pretty quiet through here. nash and dixon relatively benign this year and then down into horseshoe that is a, a big corner standing up in front of you and she rolls off horseshoe Aye. So with the, we're seeing with the sleds this year, they're wanting to take their sort of uh, 
almost a late line to Horseshoe to get a sort of middle apex, almost like you're drawing a triangle for Horseshoe to come out again. She's taken it too far around the corner, and she's just, and the gravity's just pushed it back up and rolled her over. Ah, oh, that's well, gonna, she's that's... got a kilometre of ice before she gets down this is a long to the down. low point. Yeah. Coming down the straight into Martino, underneath between Martino and Portago. That's where the Cresta run goes through under the track. There's where you come back uphill. And the track workers are going to try and grab her before she starts rolling backwards again. So well drilled, these guys. Well, she oh, still she gets a track record. There's the irony. And actually, it's the World Championship. She could go again, and she might well do. Depends how she is feeling. Yeah, I think if she's feeling okay, I think you, you'd want to. Still your first World Championships. So obviously, it sucks. And it's, it's the first of four runs as well. What she won't want to do is go away from this having crashed and not got back into the sled and then go to the women's bob race next weekend. Yeah, for sure. Well, she gets quite high in Horseshoe. Horseshoe normally goes straight up to the woodwork. This year, it's curved over at the top. She came down yeah, much too, too early. early. Yeah. Because you'll see through there as well in, in, in some of the other races and the two-man and the four-man. If you take a tap out of there into telephone, that is a very painful She was leaning be. up there against the sled, trying, trying to, get to get it to it come down. back up. But, of course, as you're leaning up, you're also pushing down on the sled. So it's, it has a neutral effect. But, yeah, she hauled it down too quickly. The problem there is you're, you're doing 65 miles an hour as you come into Horseshoe. So you've got a split second to judge getting off. And unfortunately, she didn't quite judge it right. Brought it down too, yeah, early. too early. And then, you yeah, know, at that point, gravity is a lot stronger than you. So yeah. you're not going to get that down try as you might. But you see this little tow system they've got here yeah. where they'll pull the sled back up to the top. Yeah, they've got a, a power winch. So Just, I, I mean, okay. you can see these guys are puffing and, and panting, and they've been here for months. It, 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 you're 1,800 metres above sea level. You feel the altitude here when you're when you're running. Oh, definitely. Well, I was on a track walk here yesterday, the first one I've ever done, which was uh, I, I was saying to you off air, I was kicking myself for because it is an absolute marvel this thing it, it is a two mile ice sculpture mm -hmm. and when you actually go and walk it you, you realize just the incredible sort of engineering feat it is it's uh, an amazing thing to behold there's the u.s team at the top brian scheimer the coach uh, waiting for the track to be cleared nicole Vokes sled there in the fresh air yeah. Keisha Love, Kaylee Humphreys, yeah. Brakeman for next week, who's been learning to drive herself. Did well at World Juniors the other week in Winterberg. Yes, she did, yeah. Came back from the Junior Worlds to, to race on the back of Kaylee's sled last weekend. So, And actually, you'll see a number of athletes in this field. And actually, in the men's field, that we see the, the two-man starts this afternoon, uh, former brakemen turned into drivers. Chinese coach, that's their coach, isn't it? Heading down just to make sure that uh, Ying is okay. So at this stage, you're wondering: is it, is it, you know, is physically she okay? Or is it more a mental thing? You know, oh, it's her yeah. first world champs, her first run in the yeah. first world champs. Well, it, I, I, being dumped, be being dumped out of horseshoe will definitely have uh, rung her bell a little bit. But uh, she was out the sled, she was up, and she seems to be okay. Uh, but again, of course, now the adrenaline is sort of uh, is soaking away. Then she's starting to, to feel it a little bit more. I think probably. Yeah. No, we've had it before in, in, uh, in crashes myself and Bob say, you get out and you're sort of like, right, don't let anyone know you're, you're in pain, you're good. Yeah. About an hour later, you feel like you've been... Uh, yeah, put yeah there is a, a lot of machismo nonsense going on about... Uh, oh, don't, so, don't fit. Yeah, yeah. But actually, you know, if you, as an athlete, if you complain about every A campaign, then you'd never get anything done. Just... Uh, oh, there's plenty of athletes who do that, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> every minor A campaign. I think, I, I think, like, in real life, you just kind of go, oh, yeah, I, I just, I'm not going to bother, you know, going to the doctor with that. I'll just get on with it and stuff. And there she that is. That looks fun. Yeah. It's, totally it's I tell you what, that, that winch does not hang around either. Look at the way it's, the way it's reeling in the cable. Yeah, and he's got that high-tech device to make sure it uh, stays Well, because you right don't want to get your hand in the way of that. <laughs> even with a glove, even with, like, a, a welder's mitt, it will burn through it in, a, in an instant. Yeah, she's not feeling that great. I mean, she'll be disappointed, frustrated, angry with herself, really annoyed that she hasn't made that mistake in training, yeah. and then she's gone and binned it in the first race of the World Championships. I mean, the good news for her is it's not a home Olympi Olympics in Beijing, so there we're, there's that. But 
Well, yeah. we know another athlete who had a uh, pretty disastrous start to his two-man world championships career, and he went on to do all right, didn't he, Mr. Yeah. Friedrich? So, well, and, um, and, and Francesco Friedrich had, uh, has crashed a couple of times in training as well, a again, rolling it off Portago. Well, that's the thing that made everyone go, OK, something might be wrong with Portago <laughs> here. Well, but again, you know, he crashed in Whistler because they used, you know, he was steering the way he knew that 50-50 need to be steered, but it had been iced differently, and so yeah. it didn't work. And, and you can't tell that in the track walk. And, and again, at Portago, you're doing 145 kilometers an hour, you know, yeah. well over 85 miles an hour. And you've got a tenth of a second to make a judgment call. It doesn't look any different. It doesn't, oh, hello, we're over. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and then they re-iced the corner for the next day because the Germans complained. And he, and he reacted in a way that would have got him through safely on day one and rolled it off on day two. Because the ice oh, was well, different. Oh, I didn't so, know that. Yeah, apparently so. Huh? So, um, oh, interesting. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. tune in for the two man layout. That's going to be a good watch. I, I think Francesco has crashed more this year than at any time, probably in total, in his entire career. Yeah, no, you don't, you don't really hear about it. When he crashed the two man in Park City, he said, That's the first time I've crashed a two man in nine years. Yeah. yeah. And of course. Uh, well, you know what? Every shows he's human. It, he is absolutely <laughs> human in, in every reaction and instinct. He's just a bit superhuman when he drives a sled. OK, we will hear those famous words from the track announcer in a moment. The barn is fry. The track is clear for Nickel Vogt, the second of our 20 sleds in this Women's Monobob World Championships. First heat underway and a crash, but still a track record for Ying Ching of China. Now, if that doesn't put the willies up the next few athletes having to mm. wait for 10 minutes before they go, then nothing will. This is not Altenburg, it's not Whistler. Nobody goes, right, deep breath, this is going to be really, really iffy. Yeah. But everybody knows that this year the track is challenging. And with the speeds you've got here, it is always a challenge. Yeah, and then Nicole said to me before this, it's with, again, a bit like we were talking about in Altenburg last week, with such few runs to master it, mm. you're kind of you know, getting your first two training days done and then you're just picking your game plan and going for it, hoping that it works. So we'll see what Nicole's got here. Well, a six flat start for Ying Ching. That is our fastest start so far. She's in and hands on the D-rings down into that little first corner, 6.41. That corner for Skeleton is very di di difficult because you can't steer, you have to bump up it. In a bobsleigh, you've got more control and you can come round nice and straight down here. Watch the runner tips, can not steer at all. It just destroys your speed. Yeah, and, and wall has been tricky this year. It's really pushing people around. And, um, like we say, they'll benefit from the colder ice this morning. We'll have, have a lot more grip, which is going to suit the monos because we're, we're always talking about how these girls are optimizing these sleds. You know, they're putting thin runners on the back or they're um, drifting their weight further back to just try and get some more weight towards the back of the sled. It's looking good. That's, there's the exit wheels. Yeah. Out of horseshoe. Eight tenths back, but now she'll start to pick up speed because, of course, Ying was upside down by this day, so she is on target for a new track record. And there's the green numbers. Fastest runs in last year's Monobob World Series race here in the second heat, Alana Myers-Taylor, a 1.10.88. Expect to see we might go quicker today. 129.7 kilometers an hour down at the bottom of the track. And a 1.13.39. So for the moment, she is the track record holder. And I think that was a decent run from Nicole there. Yeah. You, you know, a few little, little sort of... Uh... Nice and moments, but I think uh, generally that was, that was pretty good. Yeah. Again, the brakeman in me wants to really call these guys out if they go over the, if they overshoot the braking straight. <laughs> but, uh, well, there's not a... there's not much room to slow down. I mean, she came through the speed trap at 80 miles an hour. In a four man, you'll be doing 85, 86, maybe 87 on a really frosty, yeah. cold day. Yeah. So there's not much room to slow down. No, absolutely. This, but this is really good. You can see, I think that's is that our shamrock. You see that's how it's just devil's diet. Yeah, gets knocked out sideways. Yeah. Big skid. And actually, some of the coaches were saying, if you get devil's diet wrong, that can cost you seven or eight tenths. Yeah, man. Because the speeds are then so much lower. Next up, Brianna Walker for Australia. Seventh here last year. This is her second World Championships appearance in Monobob. Fifth in the Winter Games. 
She has been one of the standouts in the early days of women's monobob racing. Listen, we see a big start here out of Bree. 590, Ooh, look at that. Very good. So last year in the World Series, we were seeing 580s. I think yep, from, uh, from Cynthia. From, from, uh, from, uh, Alana and Cynthia. So that's, uh, I think that will stack up today as a, as a pretty top-notch start. She's carrying this well here. So this year with the new coaching setup, with the likes of uh, the legend that is Pierre Luders looking after her, that guy was a wizard on this track. So he's just the sort of eyes you want teaching you how to, to get down this for a world champ. So Bree's in a good place here. Neatly out of Snake 1 and 2, through Sunny, little skid down to Nash and Dixon. Why are two corners here named after British sliders? Well, because they were members of the Samaritz Bobsleigh Club, and they're the only members of the club ever to win Olympic gold. And my question then is always, and I've never really actually asked anybody, what were they called up to 1965 when they were called Nash and Dixon? Uh, that's true. Well, they've got one called Nameless, maybe it was Nameless yeah. 2 and 3. <laughs> Must have had previous names. Let's see. She's flying. She is absolutely flying. Brianna Walker could be a real medal contender here. Good speed between Martino and Portago. 111.59. Better part of two seconds up on the American as well. That's a fantastic running CP Pierre and uh, Kyra, okay, two wizards in the box there. Chiropractic wizard in John and uh, Bobstay wizard in Pierre. So fantastic Talk stuff. To John. Sarah Blizzard. It's a real shame for these guys. They 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 were denied the chance to do the two person here um, the next week uh, due to a misunderstanding with the uh, the race rules and stuff. Which really, you know, there was precedent to let them compete, and it's a huge impact for Sarah's funding and everything. Yeah. So it's been a real shame for them. So Bree's going to want to get a result for the pair of them here. Yeah, she's had a tough year, Sarah Blizzard, in trying to get things together. The Aussie programmers uh, could uh, should really have been quite a lot stronger this season, but. Uh, they've had a couple of funding setbacks. So, Brianna Walker with the lead, with a track record and a start record. Now then, start record, I would think, would tumble now. 28-year-old Lisa Bookwitz, 2018 Olympic champion as a brake woman. She makes her driving debut at World Championship level. She's had five podiums, including one win in the Monobob World Cup so far this season. So, let's see how Breeze starts that up there against Lisa. 86, so I mean, only four hundredths of drift, so yeah, that shows the quality of Bree's start. Because Lisa, you can see the way she fired the sled out and gets after it. She yeah. really is a hell of a starter. Again, think it's going to speed up in the second heat. It's very frosty, so the runners will be sticking to the ice like your fingers in a refrigerator. That's it. This is the only track in the world where you're wanting to be seated as far back as possible. You don't want to go off early here. Well, in the old days, guys like Christoph Langen were able to choose whether they went Germany 1, 2 or 3 based on the World Cup rankings. That's where you'd start. He'd always start as Germany 3, so he'd go off like 18th or 20th or yeah. whatever in the world to get faster ice. No, that's, that's definitely the strategy. 700s back on Brianna Walker. And Lisa was learning to drive while she was still competing as a brake woman right up to the Beijing Games. So this is her first season officially in the front seat of the top level. Good speed as well, only 900s back. This is going to be close with Brianna Walker. She, this, I mean, this is a good run. She's got top speed here. So uh, actually, we'll, we'll, she has got top speed. Tap. So 82.2 miles an hour and 700s. only 700s back. Yeah. And of course. No material advantage. Everybody has the same sled. They're built by a company in Bavaria called Xsense. They are a spec sled. You're allowed to use your own runners. They're standard two-seat sled runners, but you have to use every other piece as it comes from the factory. You can see from the missing wrap there that this sled has not stayed upright on every trip down the track. I think uh, those were love taps from Altenburg for Lisa, yeah. um, taking the paint off there. But. Hey, this is why this is such a good event to watch. It's why it's now rightly a World Cup event. It's now why it was probably one of the most watched events at the Olympics, I think. People recognize that this is about the push. It is about the drive. Um, and that's what it should be. It should be about who's the best athlete in the front seat. And uh, boom. Great matchup we're already seeing from Lisa and Brie. Good job, yeah, girls. Hit the wall there, and that's taken a little bit out of her. Again, she's feeling a, a little... Uh, she needs Dr. John, doesn't she? <laughs> yes. Yeah, he can put things back in places you didn't know they were supposed to go. Happy birthday, belatedly, to Bianca Ribby from Canada, turned 27 yesterday. So Ribby, another former break woman, got into the front seat. So she's going to be looking for a big push here. Something into the low 6 0s, I think. First saw her in Whistler, where she took gold in the monobob, so she sure knows how to drive a sled at home. Let's see what she's got here in Samaritz. Yeah, and a huge congratulations to, to Bianca as well. She just got offered a firefighter role yeah. back home, so I think uh, she'll be 
managing to uh, straddle two careers. I think they're going to support her, and that's really fantastic news. Just keeping this nice and quiet at the top here, carrying speed through. So Ribby's got, she's got a real natural talent. They're recognising this as a Canadian program. Real good feel for driving. You know, they talk about the eyes and the hands. A little choppy from Nash to Dixon, and the tap as well down to Horseshoe. She was three tenths back. She needs a good exit there. That was pretty clean into telephone, but flops of uh, name of uh, Shamrock. Safely through Devil's Dyke. These fast right-hand corners, when you've yeah. got your head buried in the sledge, you feel the G-forces, don't you? Yes, as a brakeman, when you're when you're learning the track, you're, you're feeling for four distinctive mm. hard rights and then two lefts to finish. So it is the first left. Because otherwise, all you get is the chatter of the runners and the whistle of the wind. I yeah. mean, it's such a serene place to come down in this sled. 7600s back, Lyndon Rush on the left, and Justin Cripps on the right. Cripps was racing up to February last year in the Olympics and then converted to coaching this season. Well, Cripps, he was another one who had a great feel for this track. Every time we race Cripps here, He's, well, he's, he's a four-man gold medalist at this track. You know, he, he always, I remember in training seeing really good downtime, thinking, oh, he just knows how to drive this place. He knows how to, you know, find pressure in the corners and then use that pressure to launch you out um, to gain speed and everything. There is a technique to driving this track and uh, some pick it up better than others. But a uh, decent one for him, for Bianca. Came a little early out of Nash into Dixon, had the tap there and a little flop uh, out of Shamrock. So Brianna Walker leads from Lisa Bookwitz and Bianca Ribby. Five sleds down, 15 to go. Here's the big hope for Switzerland. Melanie Hassler finished ninth in last year's World Cup race just before the game. Oh, ah, not an optimal low, but a good push. 5.94, third rank so far. She's had three fourth place finishes in the Monobob World Cup so far this season, yet to claim a mono medal. This would be a good place to do it. Yeah, so you just see those little adjustments there on the straightaway. They're wanting to keep to the uh, as close to the right as possible so they can get nice early entrances onto these corners. Skidding out a nameless into uh, out a wall into Snake. Which again is where you might see bigger red numbers because of that. Yeah. Melly's yeah, been coming down well in training. And she knows how to find speed at the bottom of the track as well. The Swiss know how to drive this track, so people have been watching their lines. Okay. There's that push from Shamrock yeah. out to that right side. Tap into Devil's Dyke. So she's not building the acceleration out of Horseshoe that she would like. Third best speed only. She's going under the bridge now through Leap. And now coming through our top speed trap, going into Martineau. Don't where she's in fourth best speed. 131, 81.4 miles an hour. Lisa Bookwist was doing 82.2, third right. spot. That's not too bad, Six, only 1600s, and then she can tidy up an awful lot there. It's so funny, when you're going down through that, that top speed trap in the Martino as a brakeman, you're in the back watching through the brake hole, seeing yeah. it whistling by you, and you're just urging it on, you go faster, faster. It's like you feel like you're a fighter pilot. It's the most incredible feeling. It is, uh, it is great speed down at the bottom, and even when you go off a taxi bob, they walk you off at the start, and you think this thing is never going to build up speed. By the time you're down at Horseshoe, you're doing almost all the speed that these guys do. Did not get in yeah, cleanly, though, happy, did she? Uh, I'm wondering if her visor may be. Well, we talked about this before. Oh, if you no, get three helmet. decent runs and one that's not too rubbish, then you're going to be in the frame, because nobody's going to get four clean runs. And there's that, that push out of, Sham, out of yeah. Shamrock. Hitting yeah. to the right. Because again, you want to be carrying as much speed to those first four big right hand turns before the end of the uh, before the end of the track. You do not want to be skidding or tapping before that. You need as much speed as possible. Second of our three German sleds is that of Kim Kalicki. Second world championships for her. She finished in sixth place in last year's Worlds in Altenburg. 25 years old, took a bronze, her first monobob medal in Winterberg, the first race of the new year. European bronze medalist as well from Altenburg last week. Yeah, and Kim's another one. She's, she's managing this transition the best she can. She says she's still learning to become friends with this piece of kit. And Manami actually... Yamanka never did. The uh, 2018 Olympic bobsleigh champion just never got on with this. I hated driving them. Yeah. Just hated them. Because <laughs> she couldn't work it out. Yeah, no, and some of them don't. And this is what's actually quite nice about the world champs. They haven't had to flick between the mono and the two ladies. So, so they've been able to just focus on mono this week, just stay in the one piece of kit, navigate it, optimize it, make it work the best they can. And like Nicole said, take the right game plan into this week. 900s this clack at the start. She's still 900s back coming down to Horseshoe. This is a good drive from Kim Kilicki. 
Okay. Nice Jeez. exit. Oh, and again, a big flop out of Telephone into Shamrock. She gets nudged away in Devil's Dyke. We'll see what that does to her speed here because she, uh, she's going back. Now. Fourth best speed, but only 1700s back. She was within a tenth of the lead. Good run down at the bottom. Okay, she's managing to retain third best speed into yep. the bottom two corners here. Could be within 1500s of Brianna Walker at the line. No, it drifted away three tenths. It's hard to predict because you think, especially when the speeds are showing, um, she's obviously picked something up on the way down into those last two corners. But if you have those taps at the top, you have those skids, sometimes it can be too much to overturn. And, and part of it is when you're doing that sort of speed, if you get hard on to Martino and really have to steer, then yeah. you're scrubbing off speed the way a skier does. Great view there of how far back yeah, in the sled she's sitting. In a two-seat sled, you need to get the brake woman in, of course, and so the drivers will be sitting right up against the cowl. And that's actually been an issue for Cynthia Appiah. She needs to get the weight back, but she, she just finds it very freaky to be able to see her hands. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's well, see how Cynthia manages for Canada. Third bronze medalist in the Women's World Series race here last February. Her second world champ, she was fifth in Altenburg 21. So yeah, 589 there. Now the brakeman in me wants to critique <laughs> a bit of her push there. So you'll see in the, uh, hopefully if we get a slow-mo of her start again, you'll see her just rearrange her hands before she wants to get in. That's taking pressure off the sled. You don't want to do that. So as a, as a push coach, I'm saying, no, keep pressure on the hands. From 100th up to 100th back, very close with Brianna Walker. Interestingly, Cynthia's actually done, until this World Championship, she's actually done more four-man races than she has uh, <laughs> mono and two -pers, so. Yes, that's true. She did end up breaking quite a lot of four-man races. She's in the green still, Cynthia Appia. So again, another athlete managing the transition from mono to two-woman, and she's... And they're taking the same line as Kim. Oh, oh, there's that. Really Shamrock. in danger there, out of Shamrock into Devil's Dyke, and that will just destroy the speed. She was in the lead. Look at that, six best speed. She's our eighth sled. One of them was upside down, so... Yeah, I think this is going to keep going back here. She's got yeah. to try and keep this as clean as possible into Martineau and Portago. Well, that's the rubbish run. So the next three have to be really top draw efforts yeah. for Cynthia Appiah to do what she could do, which is grab a medal here across the line. 2700s back, still ahead of Kim Kilippi, Kiliki, Bianca Ribi, and... Nicole Vogt yeah, and Ying Shin. So actually, well. yeah. yeah. Okay, so good job. I say she has a you know a bronze from last year um, on the World Series here, so she she has got pedigree here. She can. Three hundreds ahead of Kim Kalicki despite that big flop. So this is out of telephone into uh, out of horseshoe into telephone. Gets nudged away, came down just a little early there. And flops into Shamrock, which means she's not on the wall at all. She's in the gutter, comes out too late, and then bang, into Devil's Dyke. She's nowhere near Devil's Dyke when the sled slaps the wall. So she gets ro almost rolled over by that third pressure. Big smile on her face. That was sort yeah, of, I got worried. away with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Plus also, look around you. Yeah, no, the, the blue skies are certainly calming. More than the mist of them, though. Now then, our women's Olympic champion in bobsleigh lara nolta 24 years old two wins basically since she won in lake placid she's barely been able to stop winning they've barely been able to stop her winning she's been on the podium for every race she's the european champion can she add a world crown to that five that's nine an zero start from laura great job because she ran that far as well and that's a risky strategy here because if you kick out the spurs here set into a skid in this straight part you're, you're killing your speed, so she's absolutely nailed that. And again, look at the runners, absolutely tracking true. Not a breath of steering going on from her. Just a little whis whisker away there into Snake. That was clean down to Sunny is clean too, building a slender advantage. This is beautiful so far. She's getting pushed nicely off the corners, nice and straight. Early entrances, efficient exits. This is great. If she keeps this up, she's going to be uh, potentially significantly yeah. up. I mean, Kelly Humphreys going to keep one arm. Best one. speed as well in the forest, 62.8 miles an hour. This is quite, I mean, we're in San Marin, so it's quiet anyway, but this is about as uh, good as you're going to see, certainly in a monobob. Yeah, you hear so many of the mistakes here clearly when they tap the wall. This Into is a stunning. Martino run. and Paul Targo, 133, 82.7 miles an hour. And across the line, a new track record and a three-tenths of a second lead plus 
So Laura's got uh, pretty much her entire family out here watching at home, friends watching, she's a shout out her parents. Um, she was in a different group to the, to the sort of main girls. It's different from Brie, Kaylee, um, Melly Hasler. So they were a little bit uncertain, the Germans, coming into uh, this race. And we don't actually know how we stack up here. So again, we've selected our game plan and hopefully it works. And yeah, well, that definitely did work. Well, the penny really dropped in Lake Placid. Suddenly everything clicked. And once she's got her head around this sled, OK, then she's back to being Lauren Nolte. And that is a really nice exit out of Horseshoe. Tiny little tremble from the sled, the tiniest of touches just before getting onto telephone. But a big smile, she's happy with that. And she needs to have had a good run because here is the danger. Here is our medal favourite. Sorry, but she just is. Kaylee Humphreys has been down this track, I don't know how many times, but probably more than the entire field put together. Our world and Olympic monobob champion. There's no question the target is on her back. Absolutely, and gold last year at the World Series event. So again, like you say, many runs, serious pedigree, and we're looking at potentially male or female, the best driver in the sport. At a 5.89, she's just absolutely turbocharged her start this year. She's found form and fitness again. Um, she's got her, her osteo Gordon Bosworth, a British physio, out here um, helping her out. So she knows how to get things optimized uh, for, a, for a world championship, for a major championship. She knows how to prioritize the right things. Ooh, a little drift from 100th up to 100th back. It's going to be about five, six hundreds back now. Oh, no, she's limiting the damage nicely into Sunny. When you come for the first time, you don't know what to expect. Kaylee knows what to expect, but every year there are subtle differences. But the more times you've slid anywhere, the more you've got a chance of reacting. Best speed so far. Here we go. She saw coming catch. out of Shamrock. She didn't hit that right wall. She kept it straight. And what happens is if you're not taking two wavy lines and crashing and smashing everything, you're also um, completely decreasing the length of these racing lines. So she's taking the shortest route here. And there's the green numbers. Yep. 133-1, 82.7. Same speed as Lara Nolte. She's going to have a slender lead in the line Ooh. and a new track dead record heat. tied with Lara Nolte. It is a dead heat. Look at that. 590 start for Laura, 589 for Kaylee, and bang on at no the end. No hundreds between them. It's, I mean, what a race we've got. Well, what the women's skeleton race yesterday was won by one hundredth of a second over four runs. That's nearly eight miles of ice. A hundredth of a second between two very different sliders on two very different sleds from two different nations. I mean, well, that's it. And well, and the, so tight too. And for the for the Brits and the men's, you know, Craig Thompson, bless him, hundredth outside of the yeah. was taken fourth, agonizingly close. So, you have got to be absolutely on the, on the money. So, this is a real privilege to be commentating on this because I think we're going to see a hell of a battle here between these two. Agreed. I mean. The track that is that's not good. That's no, not. She's got, got time to gain. Wall. We've not seen anybody bounce up that wall. That was the skeleton thing. She's running it deep into turn one. She will not make that mistake a second time. Exactly. And if that's Kaylee's bad run of the day or the weekend rather, then uh, we are on for something. Everybody. Now then, what about Angia Greku of Romania? Finished 15th here last year, but she was 11th in the world in Altenburg in 2021, and she finished in 12th in the Olympic Games. So she's definitely got top 10 potential. But I don't know. She, if she has four good runs, she could easily be in the top six. So Andrea is definitely going to be my outside shout here because look at the start. 96, so a, a little skid. bit off what I thought she'd do, but there's still a solid start. Again, she's another one, like Kaylee, really brought her physical um, preparation way back up this year. So See the way she's tucking herself down on these straights? Yeah, she's, no, she's a little... Just to cheat the wind a bit. I thought she was just slightly um, wider going to that first corner. Ooh, yeah, this there's is, a tap. Again, not what you want. So let's hope that this is her the slightly dodgy Random one of the day. So absolutely. yeah, absolutely three tenths back already. And again, a little skid out of Dix, uh, out of uh, Sunny down to Nash and Dixon. Needs a good clean exit from Horseshoe. Yeah, she's going to want to pick up some speed again now. If she can get out of Shamrock, watch it. See if it pushes her. It does. Not too Ooh, bad. And a skid as well. But then she got tapped sideways there. And again, that drag speed out this lead. So, oh, and then we go. What's the second back here? So. European monobob silver medalist last week. Only the tenth best speed at the bottom. She's going to be a full second back and change at the line and a hit in the wall as well. One and three quarter seconds back. That's an absolute nightmare for Andrea Greco. Yeah, she's got a lot to brush up on, a lot to change up. It's from the seventh star, she's not been willing to drop back and. Uh, 
there were pretty clear areas there. But you can see how tricky this track is in the game. When you're trying to manage these sleds, it's 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 difficult to get she down. She made clean. almost every mistake there is to make right from the very beginning, skating out a dink one and here. Yeah, and those goes those flop offs, those skids down. You're just again, as you said earlier, they're just scrubbing speed. So going sideways into Devil's Dyke and again taps here. Even Martino and Paul Targo and a big hit with the wall out of Paul Targo. Not great news. So Lauren Alter leads, tied with Kaylee Humphreys, Brianna Walker heading the chasing pack. Second half of our first run of this women's field, and we get to our fifth of 11 debutants. Riley Compton, the 25 year old from the USA, has never raced on this track before. 10 monobob races since she started in January 2021. Yeah, like you say, it's her first time here, and she's Riley's one of the most positive, upbeat people on the circuit. She's just so pleased to be here. It's her first world championship. She wants to just have some good, clean runs. It's interesting, her first two-man run. Uh, oh, there's... There's the sting in the tail in wall. And you can see again how that tail of this sled was... This is the first person we're seeing, really, where you can see that tail wants to drift out. Yeah. But Riley's first brakeman in her two-man learning days was her dad. Right. So, uh, <laughs> and uh, by all accounts, didn't want to do it again after. Yeah. Maybe she could do with her dad in the back today. Yeah, he was. Uh, we met him uh, in the States, and he was saying that he used to coach her in softball. He enjoys right, yeah. coming to the bobsleigh tracks much more because he knows nothing about it, so he's not trying to coach. Very skiddy run here from Riley Compton. Yeah, it's a, this is just an experience. You yeah. know, she's still learning how to, how to drive these things. She's also probably the lightest athlete in the field, which doesn't help when you're trying to get the sled to behave. You can put as much ballast as possible at the back, but still. OK, a 113 at 94 for Riley Compton. Yeah, so again, it'll just be for, for, for Riley now. I think she's going to be looking at certainly tidying that up, having three consistently improving runs from here. And a better break, Riley, come on. Hold them on, hold them on. <laughs> And, uh, and yeah, and I think that rubber. would be a, a satisfying first world champs for her. But yeah, I mean, an, an awful lot to clean up here. Well, great view here of the back of the tail sled sliding around as she comes out a wall. And again, those drifts. The first thing they teach you when you learn to ski is how to put the skis sideways to slow you down. It works the same with ice skates, works with our runners as well. So. Uh, taking speed out of the sled all the I way. I have a big smile still. <laughs> <laughs> now then, Victoria Chananska first came to notice in the Youth Olympic Games here in 2020. She was the silver medalist. She then raced a 17th in Beijing. 18th place in last or in the last World Championships 2021. I keep saying last year, but it's actually two seasons ago now. 628 start for Victoria. Yeah, so another young athlete here, another, you know, again, we said the uh, the nicest wraps in the in the sledding uh, circuit. Beautiful Slovakian sled. But she's young, she's still got a lot of improvement to make physically to improve her start. And she, you can see that actually changing every week. But, uh, yeah, an exciting prospect. Yeah. Well, she's used to the big time. Youth Olympics, there will be a lot of Ferrari around this track. Makes the World Championships look actually quite calm. Skids early on down out of Nash and Dixon into Horseshoe. Let's see how she judges the exit here. That's pretty nice and smooth and smooth as well out of telephone and into Devil's Dyke. This is where the speed picks up when you can slingshot out of Horseshoe and keep it clean through the forest. You should be motoring at the bottom. Yeah, she's going to these four big right handers. Round Gunter Sachs into this straight. Ah, but that's exactly what we don't want coming into this speed trap. Yeah. But you know what? This isn't this isn't too bad for Victoria. It'll be a Again, top 10 run. Lots of little skiddy moments she can clean up. Ninth ahead of Andrea Greco. 20 years old. She's got a, a long career in front of her if she wants it in the sport. Yeah, she found you know almost the top end of 81 miles an hour there. So She's definitely shifting. She appeared in the World Championships in Altenburg in 2021, aged 18. She finished in 18th place. She is currently ninth out of our first 13 sleds. So this should be a top 10 run for her, I think. Yeah, and she, she managed some of the, uh, the danger zones yep. pretty well as well. So, so rather the speed danger zones, apart from this one. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want that. 
So you want to be as straight as possible. But again, lots of areas to tidy up. That tiny error probably takes a quarter of a second out of your run, mm -hmm. at least. So next up is our third German sled, and this is another debutante. 26-year-old Maureen Zimmer comes in as the junior world champion from 2022 and 23 in women's monobob and in women's bobsleigh as well. So we're going to see a lot of Maureen Zimmer in these worlds. And I'm, I'm fascinated to see this as a brakeman because I know this girl can start. I've seen her, her numbers from the German push champs. 81, oh, there oh, it is. Boys. Hey, don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. So, 81, start record, fantastic. Right. Start record two years ago here, uh, last year rather, was 580 from Alana Myers-Taylor, and that will have been later in the day, so Maureen Zimmer could well be under that. 12 hundredths of a second ahead of Kaylee Humphreys and Lauren Alter. Hey, we're looking at the future here. I think you've got to start like that so you can just see the drive. Is, it's, the drive is just not quite there yet. Yeah. She's learning. Big skids, and again, Big skid there down into Nash and Dixon. Yeah, I mean, from the German Federation perspective, teach this girl to drive and just a little bit. Oh, she's okay. So we've seen the red numbers now, just yep. because of all those inefficiencies at the top, you know, those little skids, longer lines, um, all inefficient for getting down fast and making the most of that start. But you know what? This is good you down here. Like that, you've got a lot in the bank. This is very good down here, and she will just feel herself. She's had six runs so far on this track in this sled. This is her seventh. By the time she's got ten under her belt, she'll be a lot better. Yeah, this is it's going to be fourth or fifth at the line. Oh, it is sixth place. <laughs> yeah, oh, rattle the fillings. Keep your head above the. Uh, the no, no, no. Get your head. Get your wall. head down. <laughs> if you're going to hit the wall, you're going to hit the wall anyway. So sixth place at the line. Five hundreds behind Switzerland's Melanie Hassler. And 90, 21 hundreds out of the medals and three heats. That means she's going to make up seven hundredths on Brianna Walker or on third place in the next, uh, per heat in the next three heats. That's how tiny the margins are. But what, what a start for Maureen. Yeah. What a little powerhouse we're seeing here. Unbelievable. A little tap there. That's probably the biggest slide we've seen there. This is out of Snake 2, down into Sunny. Long skids. We will see a lot of that this week. Snake 1 and Snake 2 are very much closer together than they normally are. And boom, in the air. Well. Yeah. That was a big old hit. Oh, so I will always say, you know, OK, put your head down maybe, but if you're taking the exit like that, you know, I think maybe take it right to the well, end. And then she didn't want to free drink it off the end. That's Wai Mingming Ming of China, another first time world championship starter. 17th here in February's race last year. She was sixth in the Winter Games in February 22. So she has real potential. And a 604 getaway, so 11th race push. Just gets away with that. Yeah. Decent around kink one and kink two. So, yeah, she's trying to drift that over to that right side to get a nice early entrance onto the wall. And it's so flat there that you don't have to drive. You just sort of shift your backside yeah, yeah. And, and it wriggles the sled across. It's real subtle changes. Yeah. Because, again, any any sort of skid there, any sort of uh, dodgy moment hitting the wall, you, you, you just you might as well find the offering. Now to Sunny. She is losing time to the lead group. This is going to be doing well to be a top ten run. She needs a big exit here out of... Horseshoe, little skiddy from telephone to Shamrock. She taps the full Devil's Dyke. It's going to go the wrong way now, Greg. <laughs> You're going to these big right handers, round leap into bridge. Big pardon, into leap. Now I've gone to Sax. Only 11th best speed. Will she find a top 10 out of this? Hovering around Victoria Chernanska, just ahead of Chernanska by 600 of a second. Yeah, so, OK, OK for Ming Ming there. She, she had a nasty spill in Altenburg in the first week, um, which thankfully she seems to have recovered from. Um, can't get a break, son. Yeah, don't feather them. Haul them off. Yeah, get them. You're not slowing down. Stop releasing the brakes. And this is something that, <laughs> it, uh, with new brakemen, you're going to pains to tell them. If you go up like that, you hold the brakes on, because if you start rolling backwards, it's a bad day for everyone. Yeah. Horseshoe, that's probably about the right line. Middle high, not right the way up onto the uh, the overhang. But then she was late here. So that's that exit of Shamrock. You see, it's pushing everyone to that wall um, this year. Well, she didn't really get on to telephone. 
Next up is Georgetta Popescu of Romania. Well, we've already seen Victoria Chinanska, the youth Olympic silver medalist. Here's the woman who won gold, still just 20 years old. First senior world championships for Georgetta. And just a late load there pretty well. So she's really pushed that as far as she can. 6.25 getaway. Again, another young athlete with a lot to gain physically. It's a lot to improve on in the start. 2020 Youth Olympic Games, 20 uh, gold, 2022 Junior European gold, 2023 Junior World Championship gold. She has had Ooh, oh, a starry no, career, that's... but that's a, an absolute disaster down into Snake. That's a speed kiss of death, unfortunately, for Georgetta. So she's, again, this is her bad run of the day, just trying to get the rest of this as clean as possible and then get your next three runs. Started her career in monobob, so she had to learn how to drive a two-seat sled after she'd learned monobob. Most of our drivers have gone the other way. Yeah, and as, you said, as the day goes on here, the track gets a little warmer, a little less grippy, a little less easy to, to control, and that's not suiting the mono so much. So maybe it's just a little the victim of that, but also you get better speed. Yep. Let's see if she can keep it tidy at the bottom. She does. Tracks true down oh, into Martineau. Yeah, Big height in nice. Martineau, though. Had to haul it off and hits the wall, as everybody has. 113.24. Could have been worse. Definitely. That top part of the track we saw there, you know, time's just going to disappear. You're taking skids and taps like that at the top. It's really, really tough. Felt, you know, no and impossible to, uh, to overturn that. Well, still just 20 years old, two there it is. seasons, three seasons of sliding under her belt. And Kaylee Humphreys has been racing this track probably since Georgetta was about eight. Well, speaking of Kaylee, I mean, this that must be such a an, a great experience for these young athletes to be in the field with people like that. You know, she's an icon of the sport. And with someone who's not just ratified as the best female driver, as any gender driver, you know, she's that good. I mean, to be around that must be exceptional. Martina Fontineva for Switzerland. This will be her penultimate race. She'll race in the women's ball next week. And I think that will be her done and dusted. Oh, and again. Moritz 101. Don't do that. Now, just look how high she's got her, uh, her push handle set. That must be something physically preferable for her to yeah. be in that position. There are certain adjustments you can make to the sled, not too many. But that will be one of them, so that it's adjustable for different height athletes. You don't want to be Cynthia Appiah at, you know, 5'11", pushing on handles that are set for somebody who's 5'2". No, 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 no. But she's tidying this up now, but the top of the track there was, was really not what you want to see from, certainly from a Swiss pilot who knows this track so well. Because the temperatures in the valley have been so warm recently, the Swiss have had very little time at all on this track. Normally between Christmas and New Year, they'd have been here for a week. They were not. They've had a couple of days. The British uh, crews had a couple of days. Not everybody has. But that tiny little bit of extra knowledge is going to help. Third best speed at the bottom. Yeah, Martina so she... does know how to get speed on this track. She avoids the wall, and that helps keep the speed alive as well. I, I think I think that's a, a, a top 10 run there from Martina. Yeah. Um, just considering what the top of the track looked like. She's really found speed at the bottom there. So. Well, she only had the 12th best start as well. So she's giving all... She started 6.09 compared to 5.80. So, you know, she's giving away three tenths before she even sits down and then bumped all over. The, yeah, this is, I mean, look, yeah. she's Pitched it in sideways. Handbrake turn around the corner. Yeah. So I think it's extraordinary the speed she's found there. I think she thought there was going to be more grip there because of the frost than there was. Yes. But there, here from Horseshoe, look, she's just eyeing up the line. That's where we're going. The sled will follow the eyes. There's that tap out of Shamrock, but again, not too, yeah. not too shabby. But no skid. Yeah, all right. Know what she's got to tidy up there. Yeah. So she's in the top 10. Now then, another of our debutants from Poland, Linda Wyszewski, 28 years old, 14 monobob races in her career, eighth in the junior worlds. She's had one medal at Europa Cup level, but has not started a World Cup race, the top tier of sliding. Yeah, it's, it's really cool to see the Polish program coming back now. There was uh, uh, Matthias Luti, who was around, you know, sort of my first go-round bobsleigh. He, he was a really good driver. You know, yep. there's 
there's definitely scope for a strong Polish program, so she's bringing it back, which is great. And 616's not, not too bad. And we'll see uh, Polish sleds in the men's bobsleigh field as well, so good to see the program kind of being uh, brought back from the dead, as it were. Been a full year hiatus without any top level involvement from Polish sliders. Yeah, and again, you're going to see inexperience in the drive here, but it's another young one who, you know, will be looking at for years to come. Well, she didn't panic there, didn't oversteer, just allowed the sled to come back so the rear runners followed the front again. Tiny little drift from Nash to Dixon. She's on the right side for Horseshoe, gets good elevation and a nice exit. Yeah, spat out nicely there. Devil's Dyke, tiny tap but no skid. And that will help her speed build through the forest. Yeah, she's managing this, this one really well here. Not quite got the speed again. There could be some overdriving, could be skidding off the corners. There we go. Yeah. I think your first couple Ooh, of runs, particularly as a first time in Samaritan, she's just going, where's it going next? Which one? You know, yeah, because, no, because there are so many corners and <laughs> across the line. Tricky exit of Portago this year. Everybody's being very cautious not to hold the height too long, particularly in the first run. If you're going for a medal in the fourth run, OK, it'll be like uh, victory rolling in Winterberg. Just That's it. don't drive. <laughs> just hold, hold the speed. They can, uh, they can deliver your, your medal to the medical unit if they have to, but get the medal. First heat done and down, though. And Linda Vyshevsky ahead of Riley Compton and Ying Ching of China. So she's in 16th place. And 1200s behind the vastly more experienced Nikel Vogt. Little tap there as well. You can see that then leads into this big skid. Yeah, so she, you can just see it's just inexperienced. She's young, so first world championships. Yeah. And I'm sure will be a lot, lot more. Early morning nerves. Yeah. Now, Margot Bock, again, making her world championship debut in the monobob, has raced in the Worlds in the two-seat sleds before. 11th in the Winter Games, Margot. Yes, and a six-flat start is not a bad return there. Carla can managing some back issues, a foot issue. Um, she says she's hoping not to be in pain today, so hopefully uh, she's either not in pain or she's popped a few paracetamol. Um, she's a good driver, Margot, really yeah. good. I mean, she's got her, her brake one behind her, Carlos and Shaw, you know, they, they're a bit of a force, you know, and they had their first Olympics together last year. Um, you know, with, with Heinrich uh, retiring and stuff, you know, the French program um, seemed to be sort of on the precipice. It's going to come on to her, isn't it? Definitely. Yeah. She's been a race winner in the Monobob World Series. She's won gold medals in oh, Europe oh, Cup oh, as well. Big tap out of Shamrock. So not managing that as well as the others, but apart from that, this is this is yeah. not too bad. She is it's taking the speed away, unfortunately, but if she's clean here, she'll find some of that back. Little low line into the Gunter Sachs curve, and that gave her that hit on the wall afterwards. So she'd be she'd be wanting a top ten run. I think she might yeah. be just outside. She'd be, yeah, 11 just behind outside, 11. Wai Ming Ming, or just ahead of Wai Ming Ming. Bruno Manjon, Bruno Manjon Max. and Max Robert, two legends of the sport, bronze medalists in Nagano 98. That's how long they've been around the yeah. sport. And Manjon uh, healed now after rupturing his Achilles at the Olympic test event in Beijing. Yeah. The coaches had an ill-advised five-a-side football uh, tournament. And did you organise that one as well? I did. That's nothing to do with me. <laughs> that one's not on me. Nothing to do with Brakeman. That's a, that's a coach thing. I wouldn't be so irresponsible. But look, you, apart from, so there's that Shamrock pushing people into the wall there. So she's not managed that so well. But other than that, she's got, um, how, how far drift is she in the tent? So she's two tenths outside of the top yeah. ten. So uh, she's got anything can happen. Definite top ten potential. Good job, Margot. Yeah, absolutely right. And our final slider, Giard Andriuti representing Italy. She is our 11th World Champs rookie. Her first monobob podium was last weekend in Segulda when she won in the Europe Cup. 6.43, get away. So Giardo, another athlete who's you know, got a lot to gain physically. Um, needs to you know, really look at her, her physical program to make sure she gets the most out of her starts. But she's been driving a little while now. Yeah, she came into it quite late. 27 years old now, but uh, only started in bobsleigh four seasons ago. Yeah, so still learning. She's got the likes of Simone Batazzo, Manu Mahata. Uh, teaching her to drive, you know, Italian and German pilot. Oh, no. And of course, the big target for all the Italian athletes is Milan Cortina 2026. Ooh, and she takes a tap full telephone. 
A little dicey for her, Giada. Life best speed, though. Yeah. She is doing what you're supposed to do. Let it fly. And that would definitely be Manu's advice. 20th start, so the slowest getaway. She's got top 10 speed through the forest. And even that little skid not taking too much away. So is she going to end up Margot. in the top 15? And across the line. The yeah, 15th place on the nose. Giovanni Molasso there. So we're, uh, we're in a hotel with the Italians, and Yarda yep. actually uh, used our 2.5 kilo weights the other day. So any improvement she makes will be attributed to the British team. Giovanni Molasano started his career as a skeleton slider for Italy, then became a bobsleigh brakeman and is now coaching. So he's been... He knows, he's done a bit of everything, he yeah. knows, I don't think he's driven monobob. I, I, I wouldn't bet against it. But uh, he certainly not competed at the top level in Monobob. Never drove sleds either. Well, that's going to be a fascinating one at the end of the, the World Champs where they get, what was it, four four men, four women, four paras, four para athletes, competing yeah. in the Mono. Yeah. The guest race sponsored by Omega. That will be on Sunday afternoon after the four man. So we'll see if the men can put their money where their mouth is and uh, be a historic the race here next week as well, in the middle of the week with lots of old sleds and lots of not quite so old drivers. Hopefully the drivers aren't old than the sleds. Tie for the lead after the first of four heats. Lauren Alter, the Olympic champion in bobsleigh. Kaylee Humphreys, the world Olympic champion in women's monobob. Ahead of Brianna Walker, Lisa Bookwitz, Melanie Hassler, Maureen Zimmer as well as Cynthia Appiah and Kim Kalicki could all be podium threats here. And actually, if Martina Fontenev stops drifting into turn one, she's got three heats to close down on a medal as well. She and Bianca Ribby might also not be out of the frame. If you're going to pick a big disappointment, then I suppose Ying Ching of China crashing on the first run would be it in the first heat. After finishing fourth in the rough, tough Altenburg last week, we're certainly hoping for better stuff for her. If she goes in the second, third and fourth heat, then uh, hats off to her. She may well do, but she did look a little bit banged up. And of course, next week, there's the women's bobsleigh to consider as well. So it's not all about one and done. That's it for the first heat. Join Greg Cackett, me, Martin Haven, and the IBSF TV crew for our second heat of the Women's Monobob World Championships. Sleds will be on ice. We'll be back at 10.30, which is 34 minutes from now. We'll see you then. Bye for now.